everyone and welcome to our third and final video in this series on overcoming procrastination by recognizing emotional avoidance and writing a new narrative about the tasks ahead of us. In the previous videos I talked about how procrastination is essentially emotional avoidance and what we can do in order to recognize and neutralize those emotional threats. And in my last video I also talked about how we can cultivate a new narrative using the power of storytelling and intentional thoughts in order to start the work that is really meaningful and impactful in this world. If you're watching this series, there's likely something that you want to do in order to make an impact. And in my opinion, the only way we can have that impact is if we cultivate the muscle of deep focus. Deep focus is the superpower of the 21st century. What I mean by deep focus is being able to really dive deep into the work that we want to do in this world that is meaningful and impactful to us that often will bring up those emotions that lead to procrastination. These are those big picture dreams that we have that often don't have a specific due date or we don't have any accountability to other people. These might be things like wanting to start our own business or writing a novel or creating a nonprofit group or traveling the world or meeting a partner and starting a family. A lot of times we know exactly what it is we need to do or we can very easily identify the next steps, but what we struggle with is that emotional avoidance that prevents us from cultivating this skill of deep focus. Many of us are too available to distractions, including distractions of other people, distractions from technology, and just distractions of thoughts and other projects that are not really the thing that we are meant to do in this world. So here are three suggestions to help you get ahead of the curve and develop that muscle of deep focus. Suggestion number one is to identify whether or not you are a frog or a snowball kind of person. I don't mean anything about the way you look. What I mean by this is, do you do better by eating the frog or building the snowball? The classic procrastination advice is to eat the frog. This means to do the hardest thing first. It comes from this idea that if you have to eat a frog and that's something that's on your to-do list for the day, your day's gonna be a lot better if you start by just getting that out of the way eating the frog and then you get to enjoy the rest of your day. I'm an eat the frog kind of person. I like to do the hardest thing, the thing I'm most likely to procrastinate about first thing in the morning. One of the strategies that I use is I actually put my phone away in a cabinet and I leave it there the night before and then I tell myself that I can't get the phone out of the cabinet until I've eaten the frog. For a lot of times, eating the frog for me is creative work, like working on my novel, or it might be writing an essay or writing the script for a YouTube video. But there's a lot of people who don't enjoy eating the frog. And in fact, that feeling of dread about eating the frog can be so painful and difficult that it's just not the strategy that works for them. For those people, I might suggest the snowball method. This is an idea that's taken from the world of personal finance, which is about knocking out your smallest debt first and then snowballing it into the other debts and tackling the biggest one last when you've sort of built up this momentum. But I actually think it applies really well to when you're procrastinating on something and you need to get some small wins in order to build momentum towards your goal. So for some people, the snowball method might be if they have a task in front of them would be preparing the workspace for the, themselves to accomplish the task. Or if it's something that has a lot of moving parts, it would be making a list of all the various tasks that need to be accomplished. So breaking things down. Uh, sometimes the snowball method can be doing tasks that are important, but not necessarily the task. So things like doing a little bit of cleaning or um, clearing out your emails, um, answering some messages, things like that. It can be easy for people to find themselves getting distracted by little things using the snowball method. So make sure if you decide to go with this practice that you are building that momentum towards the thing that you're trying to do and not doing something that is sort of basically procrastinating by another name. I will say that the reason this doesn't work as well for me as eating the frog is that I will procrastinate all day doing a million little tasks and then I don't usually find that I have momentum to do the thing. I usually feel tired. But see what works for you and give it a try because that can be a helpful way after we've done all this emotion processing to actually begin working on the task. My second suggestion is to cultivate 
falling into the flow state. The flow state is an idea that was originally identified by the psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, and there's actually a lot of books and research that you can read about the flow state, but this is that state where we're working on something that is right within the zone of feeling pleasurable and challenging at the same time. So for a lot of people, their creative pursuits are pleasurable and something they want to do because they can access this particular feeling of being in a flow state. But the flow state doesn't just happen automatically. We can often do things to set ourselves up to enter into that state. Something that I have found particularly useful is to set a timer for 90 minutes. 90 minutes sounds like a lot, but there's actually research that shows that our brains sort of have a 90 minute cycle of focus called an ultradian cycle. And within that cycle, we usually spend the first five to 10 minutes kind of getting into that flow state. And that can be a time when we often would normally procrastinate or feel some fight or flight type responses. But in that first bit of the ultradian cycle, it's important to recognize that we are going to feel that discomfort feeling and it will eventually pass and then we will enter into this state of focused concentration. So I notice for myself when I set a timer for 90 minutes, in the first five to 10 minutes, I can anticipate that I am going to feel what is most common for me when it comes to procrastination, which is the flight response. I am going to feel a little unfocused. I'm going to feel distracted. I'm gonna to wanna to get up from my desk. I'm probably gonna to want to click onto a, a new tab and look at social media. And something I wanna suggest that you take when you're practicing this skill is to consider that to be a normal state of affairs. Like I said before in previous videos, Procrastination might be the most human thing we can do. And so just recognizing that instinct towards emotional avoidance can be really helpful in just sort of taking out the self-judgment and the self-criticism. And if I stick with it, if I sort of feel the urge to get up from my chair or click over to a new tab, and then I just allow that sensation, and this is really actually part of the skill we build when we do emotion processing, is to just allow that emotion to be present in our bodies and to not necessarily get caught in this loop of creating that emotion by ruminating on it, and just sort of act like, okay, okay, this is part of the process, then I notice that it, it sort of rises and falls in this very natural rhythm. And before I know it, about 15 to 20 minutes in, I have entered into this deep focused flow state. However, I do wanna remind everybody that part of what's critically important is that our brain is trying to send us messages of safety. So one of the ways you can enter into the flow state is to prepare yourself ahead of time by making sure that you have had some water to drink, that you have gone to the bathroom, that you have eaten some food, anything that you might need to send your body those physiological signs of safety, and then begin this 90 minute ultradian cycle. And if you really wanna superpower your your flow state, I highly recommend trying out body doubling. This is a term that refers to just working with another person present in the room. I like to body double with friends on Zoom. So I have some friends that I can message them and say, hey, let's uh, body double for the next 90 minutes or we can often do several sessions where we'll do a 90 minute ultradian cycle, take a break for lunch, do another 90 minute cycle and I'm always amazed by how much I was able to get done. We don't talk, we don't even really interact with one another, we're just having our computer open on Zoom. I keep my video camera on because that helps me to feel that sense of accountability of like, oh, everyone can see I'm working on something, let me, you know, stay focused on the task. And I also love to body double in person. So when I get together with friends in coffee shops, we spend 15 minutes catching up, maybe having our coffee, and then we body double for those wonderful ultradian cycles. And then at the end, I feel this incredible sense of accomplishment. And I also feel many of those emotions that I am trying to cultivate that I talked about in my previous video. So you can check that out up here. My third suggestion is to cultivate a continuous improvement mindset. 
One of the things that's really sticky about procrastination is that we can be quite hard on ourselves whenever we fall into this very common pattern of procrastinating. So when we start off with using the strategies that I've talked about in this, this series, we might have a few good days of processing our emotions, creating a new story, identifying the emotions we want to cultivate, and diving into that flow state, maybe with the company of others by body doubling. And then after a few days, life gets in the way, and we get thrown off of our course, or we have to travel and we can't do our normal routines. This is where it's really easy to fall into the trap of, I tried it and it didn't work, and so I might as well just throw everything out the window and go back to my self-criticism and judgment. I don't recommend that. Instead, I like to think of things in terms of a continuous improvement mindset. It's almost like bodybuilders in the gym. Bodybuilders are not going in there one day, lifting all the weights and then getting all these muscles. They are building them slowly over time and increasing the weights each time as they build those muscles. But bodybuilders also take lots of breaks. They take excellent care of their bodies. They make sure to eat enough food. They make sure to drink enough water. They take rest days. They get lots of sleep. They change up their activities to make sure that they're not overtraining themselves. Think of building your muscle of deep focus in the exact same way. So if you fall off of your habit of practicing these skills, consider those days to be days where your body maybe needed a little bit of rest, maybe needed to let your mind wander, or even just have a day where you allow yourself to just be distracted all day and then remember that it doesn't feel particularly good to exist in that state, and then go back to the gym, AKA go back to these strategies and bring yourself back into the practice of cultivating your deep focus. And as a bonus tip, I also like to consider higher brain goals. So the beginning of the series was all about our primitive brain, seeing things like tasks and responsibilities as emotional threats to our safety. And that is part of the earliest development of our human brain. The earliest evolution of our human brain was all about keeping us safe, seeking pleasure, and conserving energy in order to keep us alive to see another day. And that was really necessary for our brains. But it's not so necessary in our day-to-day -day experience in the 21st century where we're not really struggling with that life and death experience most of the time. Some examples of higher brain goals are learning and mastering a skill, taking on a big challenge, connecting with other humans, and sharing our gifts with the world. Higher brain goals require us to be in touch with our emotions in order to set ourselves on the path towards success. If you're interested in this topic, I made a video on how we can apply the hero's journey to our goals, and you can check that out up here. So that's it for this series on procrastination. Let me know in the comments what strategies you plan to use on your own journey towards overcoming procrastination, and feel free to give any comments of what other types of videos you'd like to see on this channel. Thanks for watching.